Blunt Cuts is a podcast fueled by creativity, curiosity, and empowerment. We cut through the daily mess of life. This is Unfiltered Honesty. Park your passive at the door. This is Blunt Cuts. Welcome to Blunt Cuts. I'm CJ, and today we're talking about individual beauty and how to embrace it. Welcome guest host and beauty expert and salon owner, Nicole Faye, to the studio. Hi, thanks for having me. Hey, girl. I'm so excited (laughs) to talk about beauty today. You're so beautiful. Oh, thank (laughs) you. So are you. It's so fun to to have people that you've worked with um, and interacted with, you know, a lot. And I think Nicole and I have worked on a lot of sets together on the photo side, but we've also stayed really connected through the social medias um, and other projects. And you're just always one of those people that comes to mind, especially in building this, that can share their blunt opinion. So I'm so excited for you to talk about how oh, yeah. people can do individual beauty today. Well, I think it's really important that people they don't focus on the trends and they, they look at themselves on a deeper level and figure out who they are because we're always trying to, I don't know, I, maybe who I'm following on social media. I just kind of see a lot of repetitiveness. I see a lot of the girls wearing the same kind of makeup eye looks or wanting to have that, that matte, big, bold lip and it's beautiful. But I also then work with a lot of women here in Minneapolis and that's not who they are. Yeah, I think my eyes are incapable of a winged eyeliner. Like, oh, I yeah. legitimately have tried a thousand times, and I'm like, I think my eye shape doesn't do this. This is stupid. I'm not doing this anymore. So I'm so with you. Yeah, like, 100%. I love when there's a little bit of awkwardness or quirk mm-hmm. to a face. Um, it's so beautiful to me. And I, yeah. I think I work with, you know, I work with so many models that are... Um, coming into their own and they don't even know that their like ears that are a little larger than average are amazing or their freckles or their gap tooth or you know some unique eyebrow shape um I just love that uniqueness I just had this idea there's a little girl that I work with from time to time she does Irish dance and there was another girl making fun of her for having those big ears and I really hope that she listens to this and goes and embraces her ears. Yeah. Because and they are gorgeous. Mommies out there that are listening, you know, that's probably more our segment, right? Like, embrace your kids' quirks. Yeah. Like, do not try to fix that. I mean, they're they're kids and they're going to grow into their own. And then they can make that decision. But embrace those beauty differences. Because mm-hmm. to me, that's that's how that's what makes our world wonderful is all the different looks and faces. So I think that everybody has something really unique and beautiful about them. But we tend to focus on other people's beauty and then go, I don't have that. And then we focus only on our flaws. And I I just wish that more women wouldn't wouldn't do that. You you know, find find what it is that's beautiful about you and um, emphasize that. I think you're so right. I think there is a lot of that um, comparison, you know, happening in in social media or a new beauty brand that you follow. I mean, I love beauty branding and I love beauty companies. So I'll constantly be on the eye for those things. And then it will start to get in your psyche a little bit like, oh, I maybe I need that Pat, you know, Pat McGrath lip thing because that's beautiful that photoshopped edited thing looks amazing I need that you know so I I definitely feel like and then you start looking at yourself and you're like yeah maybe I need to change that feature and maybe I need to you know adjust to that and I think recognizing you know when you were talking about the winged eyeliner the Mm -hmm. one thing that I was thinking is like we have to pay attention to these pictures just a little bit more because you know that when you see this picture it's gorgeous but you know she's looking down in that shot, showing off her eye a little bit more. If she looks straight into the camera, it would not look that good. If you are able to go through life feeling confident and beautiful, that's all you need. You don't have to get anybody else's approval. I couldn't agree more. I think embracing you and what makes you feel good. 100%. And using beauty and using makeup and using haircuts and using, you know, self tanner and using all the products and things to just highlight the features that you already know you love about yourself Mm -hmm. that's just gonna make you feel a little extra boost on those days where you're like i'm having a down day i need a little extra boost i'm pulling out that red lipstick 
you know, whatever it may be, but you know what makes you feel good and you have that look yeah. that, that already feels you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you have your haircut. I think it's so great. Thank I you. I love that haircut. <laughs> but it's a journey, right? You know, what do you do and what do you tell the person who comes in and is like, I don't know what makes me feel good. I think I know, but then I don't. And mm -hmm. I went through a lot of hairstyles and I think I finally found the one that matched my personality and made me feel good. I had long flowing locks. I did the extensions. I did all the things. And ultimately, this blunt short bob works for me. It's quick. It's easy. I can flat iron in a couple minutes and I'm out the door. Yeah, that's great. I love that. So for me, what makes me feel good is things that don't add more stress to my day. Oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> so one, a yeah. very easy <laughs> beauty routine uh, that requires, you know, maybe washing it once a week or so. Yeah. So what do you tell people when they come in and they don't know what's beautiful about them or they want your help? Let's talk about bridal because I think this is the best example because oh, yeah, sure. you want to look like yourself on your wedding day, but you do want to look like the best version of yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we do is we send out a questionnaire and we, we want to know, you know, what is your, what do you wear every single day? So at the end of the day, when I'm doing their makeup, if I know that they wear a black eyeliner every single day, top and bottom, and I don't put that on their face for their wedding day, they're going to look in the mirror and they're going to be like, something is off. So I'm always asking, what do you do? Like, who is, who are you? Yeah, that's a really good point. Cause I'm sure you have people you're meeting at a very important day of their life, yeah. right? That you're trying to create and I don't really, for them and you have to learn quickly who they are. Who they are exactly. Yep. So we ask for, we'll go through their social media pages and kind of get a, get a feeling of who they are because you know, there's girls that have girlfriends and they go to the club all the time and they like to party and they like to wear pretty dresses. And so that's one type of person. And then we have a lot of people where we, we go on their Instagrams and they're posting that they're skiing or they're on the lake and they don't wear a whole lot of yeah. makeup. Mm -hmm. So I have to, I can't put a ton of makeup on that girl, whereas I could with the party girls. Right. That makes sense. And then recently what we started asking was at the end of your trial, when you are, well, not even at the end of the trial, imagine it's your wedding day and your hair and your makeup is done and you have your dress on and you look in the mirror, how do you want to feel? Mm -hmm. So we're getting like the most amazing That's answers. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, people are saying, you know, beautiful. I want to feel confident, gorgeous, whatever. But some of them are really fun. Like I got this girl who said recently she wants to feel flirty and I thought, that's really cute. That is awesome. And then there's another girl getting married in the middle of the woods. And so she wants to look like the most beautiful enchanted creature of all the land. And I just <laughs> oh was gosh. like, okay. <laughs> wow. But how are, fun is that? No, that's so good that you, you do that and you get that feedback. And I think you said something that really um, resonated with me. And that was how do you want to feel? Yeah. And I think it's important to recognize um, that we we can uplift our own mm -hmm inside emotion and we can connect with that through beauty products like right. we can i mean it is not vain it, it you can connect by highlighting your features and feeling great about yourself on the outside on those days that you have like something going on on the inside right you know? and you know i've been thinking about it because positive every... or negative like right. i'm having a great day i want to look great too you know so and there's a lot of people out there that don't understand makeup they're like why do you why do you wear this makeup you know you don't need to to be beautiful and it's not about that it's like i, I try to explain to men it's like when you put on a really great fitted suit and you're like yeah dm i look good or you get into a sports car that's what i was gonna say you sit your little booty into that sport seat and you grab that steering wheel mm -hmm. that feeling feel like a man you know that feeling of <laughs> I mean I love to drive so that, that feeling of like power yeah is what makeup can do it's for us you know it mm -hmm. really is and that's what's so intriguing that I love that you ask people how they want to feel yeah it's the empowerment I mean it used to be just you know doing makeup and and following trends and blah 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 but as I'm getting deeper and deeper into this industry, I'm I'm learning that there's so much more about doing makeup than I think what most people think it is. And, you know, focusing on trends, like it's great to kind of look at th some things and maybe, maybe make some updates, but there's nothing wrong. We have so many people that sit down in Tanner's chair and they're like, listen, I know that my hairstyle is dated. 
I like what I like. Just do what I want. You know, don't try to talk me out of it. And I think that that's great because Such I a know. powerful stance to know what yeah, you love. And- yeah. And I know that those women will look in the mirror and when they look in the mirror, they feel beautiful and they feel confident. And who cares what other people think? Women who have the dated hairstyles, when they look in the mirror, they're sort of remembering a time in their lives where they felt amazing. It could have been like their wedding day. Uh, it could have been at a time where maybe they they had like young babies and they were, you know, mothers and they felt beautiful and they just and so every time that they look in the mirror with their dated hairstyle, they just they they have that feeling all over again. And yeah, I think and that's I think really awesome. Like classifying dated is just something that isn't that we see it's every day in the trend. magazines. We don't see it every day on Instagram. So it's not something that we're being negative about. We're just trying to like define a word for that. But yeah. I mean. Well, You're we're over here with quotation marks too. Yeah, it's dated. so hard to see our, our finger <laughs> quotations. But ultimately, like that idea of feeling again, I think that emotional connection to beauty is so strong and especially like resonating with time periods, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And if you find your best you in the 70s and that was the look for you, then like that's your best you and you yeah. rock that. Yeah. Because like you- It's said, only a problem if you if you look in the mirror and you're like, oh, I just, uh, this isn't working for me anymore. And you have that dated hairstyle- then you go to a stylist and say, there's something that I need to, to do. I'm ready for a rebirth. I'm ready for a new look. Yeah. Um, and I think some styles are super energized by that. And I think some stylists are like, okay, this is going to be a big change, you know, right. like walking people well, through. And that. I think the, the biggest, um, what's a better word for saying fail, but like you can't just go to a stylist and say, okay, I want to redo my whole everything. What, what do you suggest? I mean, we have no idea who you are. You have to become a client of somebody and really get to know that person. And then they'll understand who you are. And then I think that they could really come up with like the best style for you that's or a really, suggestion. That's really awesome feedback because I do think building a relationship with a stylist. Um, I'm a huge relationship stylist uh, person and I have had the same stylist, you know, for 10 years mm-hmm. now. Um, my last stylist retired who I had for 15 years, you know, right. so I, I really do because there are those days and there's moments where I'm like, I'm cutting a fringe bang. She's like, no, you're not. We are not doing that. You, you will not like that. You like, you're just going through a hot moment. Like calm yourself. Mm -hmm. Yours, it will go away. You know, like, so having a stylist that is a part of your life helps you through those transitional pieces and like really building that bond. So I'm a big advocate of going to the same person who gets to know me and the things that I like. So when I want a big change, yeah. They know how to help me through that yeah. big change. For me, it's it's all about that connection, that human connection, right? So take you back a little bit. So I'm a stylist. I work with a lot of emerging models that are going into the area of high fashion. So that specifically means European markets, New York, maybe a little LA, but on the super high end commercial end, if they are going to go into a commercial market. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm always amazed. These girls are oftentimes coming in between... 12 and 18 years old, right? Babies. They're coming in. They don't know what's beautiful about them. They've been told by somebody or is scouted by an agency. And oftentimes I'm working with the New York agencies. So they've been scouted. They've been found in a mall or they've been found on the street or out at a concert. And they've been told, you know, you should be a model. We want to give you a contract, get some photos. And that's when I meet these girls, right? It's so interesting, the dynamics of of differences between personalities. But the one thing that I constantly rings true, they don't know the feature about them that made that agency love them. Okay. I would say 10% do. Out of all the girls that come in, they have no idea that it is their nose or that it is their ears or that it is their freckles or it's that they're, you know, gangly and tall but have a really long neck or, you know. Mm -hmm eyebrows or no eyebrows or just all of the different really cool unique facial features they have no idea yeah so I like to apply this to to real life too you know like I find the most unique quirky beauty pieces that people can highlight of their own looks like embrace that I have crazy eyebrows y'all like really crazy eyebrows and I've tried for so many years to like wax them and pluck them and get them to the shape that everyone else has mind them do that so I've started embracing them, letting them grow crazy. It just is what it is. And I've learned to love them. And, well, yeah, I will even have stylists be like, oh, I can just, like, fix that a little bit. I'm like, no, I love it. I love that it's natural. I love that it's me. Like, I'm going to let that go. That's my, one of my quirks. Mm-hmm. 
and I'm just going to embrace what yeah. that is, you know? You should. Like, I love getting eyelash extensions, so I do get that. But then that makes my quirky brows look even, like, crazier, and I love it. So, anyway, I really do think that if you look at yourself and you can't find those quirks, like, talk to your stylist, talk to people, but I bet you can. I bet you can find those oh, things. Yeah. It's probably the things you hate about yourself or have made fun of for years. And as you grow, woman in her 30s, you start to love those little things because that's yeah. who makes you you. That's what makes you different from the next, you know, hundred people you're standing next to um, and just embrace those uniqueness. Yeah. You could ask your husband or your boyfriend or even like your girlfriends because I, I, your girlfriends are probably the best person to ask because I know what your man's going to say. Is one of two areas, <laughs> but you know, your girlfriend is going to be like, Oh my God, I love your, your freckles or your cheekbones. I wish that I had, I mean, really that's, we all compare ourselves and there's always that thing that your friend has that you don't have. Yeah. And always. I mean, dimples, adorable, freckles, adorable moles. I have this thing that I love moles. I have literally 11 moles on my entire body because I've counted them and I know where they are and I've named them because I love moles so much. <laughs> <laughs> so I love when people have beauty marks or moles in unique yeah. places and like a lot of people cover those up. Like do not cover that up. Embrace that amazing yeah. uniqueness. Enjoy those unique things because that's eventually like in the world, that's what separates us, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. and like that for models, like that's what agencies love about you. They want you to be quirky. That's what companies love about you. That's what brands love about you. I mean, mm -hmm. they're constantly because I'm so connected to that world, they're looking for the next unique shock and awe yeah. to highlight. And if you have cool features, like go after it. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. anyway, well, thanks so much for being here today. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. And I'm so thankful that you're able to just tell people like it is and oh, yeah. share thoughts on yeah. beauty. And where can people find you? First of all, our website is uh, makeupbynicolefay.com. And Nicole Fay is N-I-C-O-L-E. Fay is unique. F-A-E. There is no Y. And you can also find me on Instagram, uh, M-U-A Nicole Fay. Well, yeah, I think we have kind of learned some lessons here today. Find those things that help highlight the best you. Bring out your uniquenesses. Find style and makeup looks that suit your best self. And love those uniquenesses that are yeah. you. Don't worry so much about all of the trends and what's in the season. Just, you know, do you. Well, thanks so much for hanging out with us. You are beautiful. We'd love to hear how you express your individuality through beauty treatments and products. Please continue the conversation on Instagram. Find us at Blunt Cuts Podcast.